Welcome back to the weekly news roundup. This is the Linux edition. And we're going to chat a little bit about some of the upcoming things in Linux. A little bit less Ubuntu news this week than last week, although we have a little bit there. And uh, as soon as I uncover the article, I'll remember what it is. But uh, let's go ahead and get on into these guys here. And uh, tracking down one of the changes in the Calamaris installer actually showed me the bug that I have oftentimes complained about. There, where if you're trying to install Calamaris, sometimes fouls out and just doesn't let you proceed. And I found that if you wipe your drive and rerun the Calamaris installer, then um, you could actually uh, install it that time. The problem has to do with a bug in the LVM. But nobody wants to fix the bug in the LVM, so it's still there after this update. Uh, this update did, did, though, change a few things, so the Calamaris installer is getting a little bit better. Of course, this is one of the more popular installers that is not tied to a uh, particular distro. Uh, and so they released version 337. I think this is, uh, I think they were off for a couple of months, and then this is them coming back. So they did not do a release notes of 336, and so they went ahead and uh, did the 336 and 337 release notes. I think the biggest major change over here, uh, they just enhanced the coding for C++20 uh, to keep up to date with coding standards, and they did a list of extra features. Here's some of the things they fixed. So the FS tab module. Um, so it, there was a bug in the system where even if you didn't do encryption, it still created a directory for an encryption key, which it shouldn't do. So that has been fixed and rolled out. And so, uh, with that, um, they fixed that bug there and they fixed a few of the things on layouts, partition module tweaks and, uh, various QT six related fixes. And they also added this one, which I think is beautiful. Every installer should do this preventing sleep and suspend during installation. Nothing is worse than, okay, this is taking a while. Let me go get a coffee. You come back and the thing went to sleep and the whole installer crashed. Uh, so I'm very pleased to see that they did that. Now, as I was tracking down, cause I didn't really understand what was going on in this first one, the encryption key until I actually read the bug report over on GitHub and looking through, there was a comment about, Hey, should we remove the LVM support because there's a big bug and it fails more often than it doesn't if you select LVM and I always choose LVM and that's why my Calamaris installs always seem to fail. That's why. Uh, but no, they're like, Oh, we don't want to take that out. That's a useful thing. Well, can we fix it? No. Okay. Then Calamaris. So somebody needs to get in there and fix that LVM module. So, uh, but we do have a, an excellent, uh, update there on Calamaris installer. Uh, Arch has LVM support now. It's, I thought this was funny because, uh, Calamaris does not want to fix the LVM module. Now Arch is adding LVM support inside of the Arch install script. If you are unaware of how the Arch install script works, uh, tomorrow, if you're watching this live tonight or yesterday, if you're watching this on the pre-released, we are doing the, uh, an install of Arch using the Arch install script. We are not actually testing the LVM support, uh, but I am showing you where it is and what happens, but we are going to walk through the terminal install of Arch utilizing the Arch installer script. Now you do have to install this. However, I did find that my first run testing this, it, in, uh, it upgraded to the Arch install 281 um, perfectly, but then I had to go back and reinstall the system again for the second half of my video because there was something messed up on the one side and there was, I was getting a, uh, a arch key error on installing the arch install. So I had to actually go to install it twice. That caused me a little bit of concern. Uh, just be aware of that. If you do not need the LVM support, I would probably not bother upgrading to the 281 unless they figure out what that issue was. Cause it was kind of like a, a key pair changed or something. And I was worried about the security of the system. So, uh, but they did fix that. And, uh, overall the arch install system does work really well. It is fairly easy to follow through. It's just command line based. And so I show you in the video how to do that. So you'll see that either tomorrow or yesterday, depending on when you're watching this particular video. And we have a estimated release date for Cosmic DE. So of course, System76 uh, was in a little bit of a minor spat with the folks over at GNOME. 
and they have decided that they want to do a, such a heavily modified, but then they were worried about extensions breaking and things like that. That's why Ubuntu had to hold back one of the GNOME versions and one of the point releases of Ubuntu. And so they said, screw it, we're busting out Rust, and we are building our own desktop environment. So Pop! OS will be the flagship for the Cosmic Desktop Environment once this is out. And uh, what they have done on this post here is uh, they have released the branding, and they're telling us that the alpha release date is going to be sometime in late July. So we are looking at only about a month before seeing an alpha release of Cosmic Desktop Environment. I am excited about that. I don't know if you guys are, uh, but I don't know. I might have to bust out some Pop! OS to... Uh, check out that guy in its live environment. Of course, they're building it in such a way it can be installed on other distributions as well. But you can see here, uh, they went with uh, their, their overarching logo feature is their O is uh, to resemble a monitor and uh, just indicating the uh, in, uh, visions enacted users empowered is what they're shooting for. So you can see their branding across the various different colors and things like that. So that actually all looks really nice. So I'm pleased to see that. It is a slick logo and a slick uh, way of writing it. So, and they did tell us here that uh, the uh, in late July we'll be seeing that. Now in the meantime, running up, uh, already running until July 9th, they actually are running some pretty good freedom sales. Of course, uh, this is one of the American companies that sells really high quality Linux computers. And um, you can head over a look over there and they do have some sales over there. Obviously, it's not a sponsor on my half. It's just I'm mentioning it because I think that they're a great company that we should probably support. And on to Ubuntu news. They have finally patched some of the NVIDIA issues with Wayland. And so 24.10, which is going to be the next point release of Ubuntu released in October, is going to make Wayland the default for NVIDIA users. The Ubuntu has been Wayland by default for a while, but there were some issues with NVIDIA. And uh, they kind of just figured out, Wayland figured out just the, the last couple steps that needed for getting those NVIDIA to work. And it had to do with, uh, I believe it was explicit sync. They got all that fixed, and now they are starting to roll this out. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the Ubuntu release schedule, they have an LTS every two years in April. So the the even years in April will be an LTS. But they, what they do with the point releases is they try and release major changes to the system so they have at least a release cycle or two of testing before they go into an LTS and that's why they were I think they were pretty close to having Wayland support for Nvidia completely figured out but there were still a few holes in it and so they pushed that back released the LTS without it so now the very next point release is going to have that Wayland default for Nvidia and so you can go ahead and have a look at what that looks like if you're upgrading to that uh, cycle there so uh, that was the the biggest issue that that uh, has been solved. Of course, Gnome and Plasma are both working with this, which are kind of showing themselves out to be the biggest uh, the biggest um, uh, drivers of your desktops. Uh, in case you need to know that, this is the five 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 driver series for Nvidia uh, that is working with Wayland. So if you can't run or not not willing to run with those, you probably want to stick with X for the meantime if you're using Nvidia. And on to our last one. Yes, one Linux distribution is starting to cram AI all over itself. And wouldn't you know it, it's the Chinese Deepin. <laughs> Oh, great. What could possibly go wrong? A Linux distribution with a crazy long end user license agreement uh, based out of China that's feeding AI. This is way better than Firefox cramming AI into it, which says, we're privacy focused. Choose which one of your digital spies you'd like to use. <laughs> All right, we'll talk about that a little bit later, I think. I don't think I cut that article anyway. Uh, but Deep in Linux is adding uh, integrated AI. They're actually adding in three separate places. Uh, the personal knowledge assistant where you can ask it basic stuff and, you know, leak all your stuff to the CCP or whatever else. Of course, I'm being a little facetious. Um, the Deep in System as, uh, Assistant, which allows you to simply tell your system what you'd like to do, like change my desktop uh uh, desktop brightness to 70%. There you go. Um, and pretty soon you'll be able to say things like, hey, Alexa, order unicorn meat, confirm. And then you'll get unicorn meat. Why not? Right? 
Uh, so, and then the last one is a grand search, will, which will allow you to search through files. And to my reading of this, it sounded like they would actually search through the contents of files, maybe. Uh, so you could look for something based on an OCR text reading of individual files. I'm not 100% sure about that last one. Uh, just reading through the article, that seemed to be it. Here's the information about the grand set, uh, grand search. So among the new AI features, we have a grand search, which is a cheesy name for an AI-powered search menu on Deep, and it can find emails code, documents, and more from a simple search query. This brings together uh, Deep and has opened up the model access interfaces so users can integrate more with uh, UOS AI with support for large models in the open AI interface format. Devs have managed to include new functionality such as automatic wallpaper switching, language setting adjustments, and screen mode configurations. So there's a number of things. What does it mean by searching documents? I don't completely know for sure. But um, this distribution has been one that I'm not a huge fan of because it had a huge, uh, just this huge um, uh, end user license agreement. And it really did have a couple of potential shady ties. However, that being said, it is still an open source Linux operating system. You can still see the code. So I wouldn't be all that concerned about it. But uh, yeah, needless to say, I'm not interested in running AI in my Linux desktop. If I wanted to run AI, I'd like switch to Windows or something, you know? And then I'd get constantly annoyed. Hey, turn on AI. Hey, I hate this. Notice, notice you're not using our AI features. Come on, man. Use our AI features. No. <laughs> All right. Well, if you want to help support the channel, we do have a locals page. We are on switch to linux.locals.com. You can jump on over there. We have information on our Thursday shows and on our short story series, which is on break for the summer. Uh, but we will come back and I'm already compiling some beautiful short stories, uh, ideas, and uh, we will be compiling all of last seasons into a book that will be available to the public uh, once that is done. But uh, with that, uh, if you want to help support the channel, lo uh, switch to linux.locals.com. Thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.